Let's go. So for um, anyone that doesn't know me, just a, um, a little intro, I'll try and keep it short. Um, but I'm Camilla Hale. I'm the author of um, several educational workbooks and a tutor. Um, so this session is going to teach you how to improve your child's English skills at home, even if you're not confident yourself when it comes to English. And hopefully it will teach you how to uh, help your child to enjoy what they're learning. Um, so I'm going to share a number of simple tips, um, methods for improving comprehension, creative writing, and tips for working with reluctant readers, because I know that is a worry for a lot of parents. Um, so I'm sure that many of you have heard that your child just needs to read, read, read in order to improve their English skills, but there is so much more to it than that. And that's what I'm going to be covering today. So for years, I told customers um, that their children just needed to read and read. Um, I feel bad about it now um, because it, I could see after some time that it wasn't as effective as I would, like it, would have liked it to be. They were trying to read a lot, but I wasn't seeing the gains in class and their comprehension and their vocab. Um, and so that's what led me to do a whole load of research into what works for comprehension and English skills try those methods out with my students over, year, over the years, write a range of books, test them out, re-edit them. Um, and so that frustration in class is what led me to the tips that I'm going to cover today and the materials and courses that I produce. I believe that it's crucial that a child enjoys learning um, as they go through their, this 11 plus journey because it's going to be crucial for their success later in life. Um, I'll talk to you a little bit about my background just so you can see how I came to that conclusion, how that's informed my approach. Um, so I went to Newstead Wood School in Kent, which is a super selective school um, where you had to do the 11 plus. Um, and then from there, I went on to the London School of Economics, where I graduated with first class honours. Um, because of my experiences at Newstead, I know that for some grammar schools can be a wonderful opportunity and just the right place for what they need. Um, but for others and for some of my classmates, it really knocked their confidence. And with hindsight, they don't feel like it was the right environment for them. So all of the work that I do with 11 plus students is in, to ensure that they have a positive experience preparing for the 11 plus, that we set foundational skills and that's what's going to help them to thrive later in life, regardless of their results and which school they end up going to. Um, so as you can see, I spent 15 years as a tutor, 10, um, around 10 or so years specializing in 11 plus tuition. Um, I do this full time. And as a result, I've worked with hundreds of students over the last few years. And I'm the founder of Kin Learning and Wordia. Kin Learning is, provides 11 plus tuition and Wordia provides 11 plus vocabulary resources specifically. I've also authored nearly 20 11 plus workbooks and um, have created a range of 11 plus mock exams. So I hopefully know these exams inside and out. Okay, let's get going. Um, oh, and before I get into that, I would be remiss if I did not mention that um, we are delivering this webinar thanks to the 11 plus journey group. Um, for the uninitiated, um, this group provides an ecosystem of parents and educators um, that want to develop children's overall well-being through academic excellence. Um, so parents exchange their knowledge in the group, help each other, and also receive help from experts. Um, the group has had a large number of webinars in the past, which are available on their YouTube channel. Um, just search 11 Plus Journey and you can also find resources on the website. Okay, so today we will be covering, first up, the basics of good comprehension, what enables children to comprehend a passage. Um, then we'll talk through the four steps for building comprehension at home, four tips for working creative writing at home, and finally, tips for reluctant readers. If you have any questions, if there's anything that you want me to explain, in more depth, or if you have any more issues with sound, um, do type them in the chat. There's no need to wait until the end for questions. Um, so just ask me as we go. Okay, 
Now you may be wondering, what does a child need in order to be able to comprehend a passage? So distilling the research a bit, um, there are three main elements that will help your child to understand a passage. So the first one is accurate reading. It sounds very simple, but it doesn't always happen. We'll get into how you can help with that. Uh, the second is deep and fluent knowledge of words. This is a phrase that I took from a study on the long-term effects of vocab and comprehension. I'll go into what that means later. And also developing general knowledge. So it's been proven that having general knowledge of, around the context of a passage helps a child to understand. It makes sense. Um, there's one research study that explored whether children could understand a passage on baseball. And if the children with good comprehension, if they didn't know anything about baseball, had trouble understanding the passage. The children that had previously poor comprehension but knew about baseball could understand the passage. Um, so it makes sense when you think about it, but it's often overlooked that um, having the general knowledge helps with understanding. Okay, so we'll go into how you can build that too. Right, so steps for accurate reading. Um, three things here that I will be elaborating on. So firstly, listen to your child's reading regularly. Once children are able to read independently, can sound out words, a lot of parents stop listening to them read and just allow them to read independently. So whilst a degree of independent reading is great, it's fine, um, we do encourage you to, um, at Can Learning and at Wordia, to continue to listen to your child read, child's reading at least once a week um, until they finish primary school. So it may seem unnecessary, but the thing is when children read independently, they often skip over difficult vocabulary. So when they're reading aloud to you, you can catch that, you can go back, pick out the vocabulary that they may previously have skipped over and also discuss it. Um, you can also make sure that they are reading the words on the page as you'd be surprised how often they're not. Um, in my classes quite often, children will confuse um, Mr. and Mrs. They'll see the word Mrs. and just say Mr. Um, weary and wary are two words that have been confused recently. Um, and the problem is that if your child is misreading that word in their head, then it's going to affect their comprehension. So read regularly, at least once a week, um, even just 10, 15 minutes a time is fine. But um, that can help to pick up any issues that your child's having there. Um, it's also helpful in terms of pronunciation. Um, sometimes you know, we sound out a word and we haven't sounded out properly. Um, one of my students the other day had learned the word butcher from her reading, um, but she thought it was said butcher. Um, so that's the sort of thing that you can pick out when you do some reading with your child as well. Okay. Um, so encourage your child to sound out words that they don't know. Often, if a child struggles with a word, then the adults will just tell them what the word was. Um, but then your child will be losing the opportunity to practice the phonics knowledge that they hopefully gained when they were younger. And they won't be doing that. They won't be sounding out words the next time they come across a difficult word. Um, so when you come across a difficult word, just encourage your child to sound it out, to break it down into sounds and then you can discuss it afterwards or talk about the cor correct pronunciation. And for anyone that's unsure about um, pronunciation, if you're not too confident in how you pronounce words, I know we have a lot of parents that didn't grow up in England. Um, in the resources list that I've linked to in the description for this, there's a website, um, the Oxford Learners Dictionary, and they have um, an audio recording that you can play the words um, with the British pronunciation so that you can just double check. So I would recommend using that regularly. Um, and finally, just using a ruler for accuracy. If your child has a tendency to skip over lines or just um, kind of skim read, then encouraging them to use a ruler, just placing that underneath each line can help to improve their accuracy. Okay, hey, um, as I said, any questions on that, then um, just put them in the chat. But I think that's relatively straightforward.
Okay, so our second component of good comprehension was vocabulary. And just, I'll just talk to you a little bit about why that's the case um, before I go into some tips. So a few things that you may not know um, that often are glazed over when we talk about English. So first of all, your child needs to be, be familiar with approximately 95 to 98% of the words in a passage in order to comprehend it. So different studies have shown um, slightly different percentages, but um, they all agree that if you drop below 95% of um, the vocab knowledge, then comprehension deteriorates rapidly. Um, so that's part of the reason that it's important to build vocabulary if you want to improve your child's comprehension. Um, just to drive that point home, I've got an extract here. This is from the CSSE 11 plus exam, so from Essex. Um, in the first extract here, I've highlighted the tricky words. So in my experience, those are the words that children struggle with when reading. Um, they're the less common vocabulary. And um, you can see below that if you block out those words, you lose so much of the understanding, your understanding of the passage. So it just becomes Mr. F and concluded his in a voice which he, to, of, a, and so on. Um, so when your child is presented with a passage that has really advanced vocabulary that they're not familiar with, just bear in mind that this is effectively um, what you're showing them. You're showing them a passage with words blocked out. Okay, also, um, the reading boosts vocabulary by about 12%. Explanations and activities boost vocabulary by 41%. So if you're looking to improve vocab, then really you want to be focusing on activities, just giving your child book after book. Um, it's possibly going to build other skills like descriptive um, understanding of descriptive language and storyline and all of that sort of thing but it's certainly not going to be the best way of improving their vocabulary. And it's not going to help them to remember the words as much as you would like it to. So keep reading for developing other English skills, but in terms of um, improving vocabulary, just bear in mind that discussion activities are going to be the best, quickest way to do so. Um, finally, um, just some research that showed that children that did vocabulary activities performed 50% better on the comprehension test than children that did general English activities. So again, just doing that work on the words can improve overall comprehension. Okay, um, so we, um, ways that you can build vocabulary. Um, just out of interest, is that news to anyone? Have you heard those? um sort of stats before um i'd be interested to know something certainly um didn't know these things kind of early in my career and had to do a lot of research to find them out um okay so building vocabulary um first off work on introducing vocab before reading um we've just got a little picture here it's like in this passage I've highlighted the tricky words, quite a few in this passage, um, but again, that shows how important it is to have a good range of vocab. Um, so go through the passage before your child reads it for comprehension purposes, highlight the tricky words and check whether your child knows them. If they don't, then take that opportunity to look the words up and write them in a word bank and also to discuss them. Um, once you've done that, then your child can have a look at the actual passage and that should deepen their understanding of the passage. Um, if your child has already done a comprehension passage and they struggled with it, um, then I would recommend going back and completing this step and um, seeing whether it was due to a vocabulary problem and if improving that knowledge can help them to do some of their corrections. Okay. Um, so once you've looked up the words, um, use a children's dictionary, by the way. Um, there's sometimes debates on this online. Um, but the problem is if you use an adult's dictionary, there's a good chance that your child's not going to understand the definition of the word that they read. Um, and then you end up in this vicious circle where they're looking up the words from the definition and they never actually get a full understanding of the original word. 
So to keep things simple, uh, to keep things effective, I recommend using a children's dictionary. And in that resources list, uh, you can find the children's dictionary that I recommend. And I'm just gonna check here. Okay, just checking for questions. I think we're okay. So um, discussing new vocabulary. Like I said, this is one of the best ways to improve new words. So um, as well as discussing the definition, you can ask your child to use the word in a sentence. Um, make sure that you're correcting that sentence. If you can, if they're not quite using the word correctly, then you can have a conversation about that. Um, for certain words, you can ask if the child has encountered, encountered that thing or that feeling in life. Um, so for example, when I teach children the word monopolize, um, then they have loads of stories about their siblings monopolizing the TV or the Xbox or something. Um, so that sort of discussion can help to cement the meaning of a word in your child's mind. Um, don't learn, don't encourage your child to learn definitions by rote and they don't have to learn them word for word. Um, remember that quote at the beginning, you want a deep and fluent understanding of the word. Um, so if your child is paraphrasing, paraphrasing the definition, that's actually quite a good thing because it means that they understood it well enough to put it in their own words. So don't worry if they're not giving a dictionary perfect definition, it's progress. Um, when you're discussing new vocabulary, also see if you can discuss the root word, prefix or the suffix, some dictionaries will have information on that for you. Um, and you can also discuss dis different forms of the word. Um, so for example, if you, if you covered the word tedious, you might want to discuss the word tedium um, and how they relate. If you're pointing out the relationships between different words, that helps your child to decode new words in future. Um, I've seen a tremendous difference with my own students when we've taken that approach to vocabulary. So it means that when they encounter a new word in a book or comprehension passage, rather than just thinking, I don't know that word, can't, can't guess what it means, they're drawing links to, oh, it sounds like the beginning part is like this other word I know. So maybe it means something, something. Um, so that's one way of discussing the vocab, helping it to be ingrained in your child's mind, um, but also expanding your child's um, range of vocab in future. Okay, hope that all made sense. There was a lot of information there. Um, oh, and the other thing was uh, to review new vocabulary frequently. One mistake that parents often make is um, they get their child to look up a word, they write it in a word bank, and then they never discuss it again. Um, generally, people and children need to see a new word, um, encounter a new word at least three times in order to remember it. And the best thing to do is to get them to encounter it on separate occasions, so maybe a day later and then a week later, um, to help to ingrain it in their minds. So don't just do things once, the child won't remember, and it won't be their faults. Um, make sure that you're repeating anything that they do learn. Okay. Um, the next one is to cover high frequency words. Um, be careful with the material that you pick. Um, don't feel like your child just needs to learn the whole dictionary indiscriminately. Um, I've seen some vocab materials that they have words like um, beatitude and jejun, um, which are just so obscure words that I haven't heard in my adult life um, for many years. Uh, they very rarely come up. And so it is highly unlikely that your child will encounter those words uh, in their 11 plus. So don't worry about the obscure Victorian words, something. Um, worry about the high frequency ones. So as well as um, being selective with the materials that you get for your child, what you can do there is um, selecting select words from passages that your child is reading from verbal reasoning papers or from the books that they're reading to make sure that they're words that do actually come up in general life. Okay, and finally, use imagery as much as you can. Um, okay, someone's a bit link button here. 
Okay, I will um, pop the, I will redo the recommended resources link at the end of this. Thank you. Um, sorry about the link. Okay. Um, so finally, imagery. There is a reason that they say a picture is worth a thousand words. It may not exactly be worth a thousand words, um, but it certainly is proven to help our brains to remember things more easily when you combine words and pictures. Um, also, kids just really like pictures. Um, I think humans do really. Um, it's just they enjoy having something to look at. So wherever you can, use imagery, look up, um, if you've got a noun or something, look up the word on Google as your child does it. Um, you can impersonate the, um, the image that you see or do some actions with it or something, just something to bring it to life so you don't just have to stick to definitions written down on a piece of paper. Okay, um, are there any questions around vocabulary before I move on at all? Uh, anything that you're finding difficult as well? Okay, I think we're okay. Um, I shall move on. Okay, uh, so building general knowledge. This perhaps is the trickiest one of the three um, of making sure your child's accurate with the reading and vocab general knowledge. Um, but there are some ways to do this and um, they're fun ways as well. So explain the world around you. Oh, sorry. Um, some, just a question on vocabulary. Someone said, so do you need to repeat the word every week? I would repeat it every week for a couple of weeks, no more. Um, at a certain point, your child should just know it and you don't need to keep coming back to it, but just make sure that you're doing it um, covering that word on three separate occasions. Um, once you drop a word from your weekly rotation, then just come back to it in four months, six months or something, just to double check. Um, but at a certain point, the word should be ingrained and you won't need to do them again. Um, what's also great about doing high frequency words is that they will be reinforced in the world around your child. So you don't necessarily have to be the one that um, brings it up to them, they'll hear that word elsewhere and that will reinforce it. Thank you for the question. Okay, general knowledge. Explain the world around you. And so take opportunities to discuss things around you with your child, but using the proper vocab. So some of this does link back to vocabulary. Um, one example that just always sticks out to me, I was on a train a while ago that was um, delayed because there was flooding somewhere and it was causing a backlog. Um, but while we were delayed on the train, this woman that had quite young children um, explained to them that the train was delayed because of flooding. They discussed what flooding is, um, which areas are more likely to flood. So they discussed that if you're near a river, then you're more likely to experience flooding. Um, she talked about what a dam is and that sort of thing. Um, so if you've just got the time to talk to your child about what's going on in the world, explaining things for them, then that's general knowledge that will really help when they come across a comprehension passage or a new book. Um, encourage other interests. I think um, TV especially gets a bad rap. Um, and so a lot of people feel like if they're working towards the 11 plus, they really have to limit TV time or limit video game time and stuff. Um, of course, you don't want your child spending all day on them, but um, experiencing other things, having other interests will help your child to develop um, skills that will then um, be useful for their English comprehension, especially. Um, I know as a child, I learned several words from TV. Um, any Friends fans will know that um, the word pivot is featured um, in heavily in a particular episode, and that's where I learned the word pivot as a child. Um, I know a lot of my pupils have mentioned uh, learning words from Minecraft or learning about just landscapes or something. Um, I'm not sure what they do in Minecraft, but it seems to help them a lot with vocabulary and um, gives context to certain passages. Um, so don't be too concerned if your child has another interest, um, but perhaps find a way 
to make that educational, to discuss it with your child. Um, having that discussion and getting your child to explain a game to you or explain what's interesting to them is going to develop their English skills. Um, and if some of, one of my pupils, I um, don't know if his mom's here today actually, um, that one of them is really into science at the moment and um, reading about that has helped with um, vocab in other areas as well. So don't be afraid if they have some other interests. Okay, um, use the proper vocabulary for things as much as you can. Um, so if you, you're somewhere with several floors, you might talk about um, how many flights of stairs there are, rather than just saying, you know, we need to go up a few floors. Um, some talking about crockery at home, that was a word that um, most of my students were unfamiliar with the other day. Um, so see if you can just seize the opportunity to be specific about vocab that you use, and that will help your child in turn. Um, and then learn about new things together. Um, so one of the resources that I will recommend, don't click the link because you'll be going on a loop, um, but one of the resources is the First Aid in English book, um, which has lists of um, th different topics, things around different topics. So um, for, they have like lists of birds, for example, which is handy because um, I did the passage of the raven with some students yesterday and a couple of them didn't know what a raven was. Um, so your child needs to learn about some different areas um, so that they can use that knowledge for English. So um, some of the words in the first aid in English, they might be new to you. Um, the collective nouns, something that I um, particularly enjoy doing with students. Um, so learning things like, um, no, I've forgotten all collective nouns, um, but a crash of rhinoceroses, that sort of thing. Um, they also have different types of habitat. You can make a game out of those ones. Um, those lists, some of my pupils, um, I think they've competed with their cousins um, over who can list the most um, collective nouns or feminine animals or that sort of thing. Um, so try to work through a few bits of general knowledge together, make it into a game, and that will support other areas. Okay. Um, out of interest, is that? Um, anyone that builds general knowledge at home in any other ways, is there anything that you've noticed that has helped your child um, with their English, like Minecraft, or um, I think any recommendations I'm sure would be appreciated by parents as well. I'd be interested to learn as well. Um, first news, okay, I've not heard of that one, um, but yeah, that will definitely I'm assuming it's a new site, help to build general knowledge. Um, discussing the vocabulary, but some of that vocab will kind of go in one ear and out the other with kids. Um, like with the election last week, uh, a lot of people were talking about the mandate that the Prime Minister had been given. So uh, apart from just letting your child watch those things, it's a good opportunity to have a, a larger discussion um, and to debate where necessary. Uh, and build speaking and vocabulary skills and listening skills. Okay, so news round as well. Um, I think there are several magazines around. I'll um, have to try and get a list of those together as well, but um, I know there are quite a few kids' magazines looking about um, which have articles on a variety of subjects, so that's another way that you can build general knowledge. Okay, if anyone has any knows of any magazines that their children enjoy, that would be awesome. If you could put it in the chat. Okay, um, so our four-step process for working on comprehension at home. Um, so these are things to do in order. Um, try to keep them simple. Like I said, I know a lot of parents um, speak English as a second language or you are just all living very busy lives and juggling a lot. Um, so try to keep it simple. So first off, picking up the tricky vocabulary, like I said before, um, so pre-read the text, identify the difficult words, discuss them with your child, get them to write down the definitions before they go through the passage. Um, then as they're doing the passage, if you can, um, or 
You don't have to read together every time, but if you can do this fairly regularly at home, then I think that would be really helpful for a lot of children, especially early on in the 11 plus process. Um, so read the text together, get your child to read aloud. Um, they may be happier if you read a little bit as well to give them a break, which is fine. Um, so read the text together and stop regularly as you read to recap. Um, we try when we're working with students to not to stop in the middle of the paragraph unless it's a really lengthy paragraph, um, just because you don't want to ruin the flow of the passage and really get in the way of the story. Um, but maybe at the end of one or two paragraphs, you can pause, go through them, get your child to summarize what they've learned so far from what they've read, um, see if they can put things in their own words. Um, that's a skill that for 11 plus exams where they're, they require written answers, children will be quite, will quite often be asked to say, what, um, how are they feeling in your own words? Um, so having that discussion is going to help with that kind of question. Um, and explore the vocab. There's um, just a little image that um, this reminded me of. So it's kind of like every time I learn something new, it pushes some old stuff out of my brain. Um, and we've definitely seen that with a lot of children. Um, when we do the vocabulary before the passage, sometimes we discuss it in depth. They have a good understanding of it. And then five minutes later, when they come across that word in the passage, they have forgotten what they learned about the word. Um, so the new information has pushed the old one out. Um, so even if you have discussed the vocabulary before diving into the text, do come back to it because there's a good chance that your child has forgotten it. Um, and then finally, so simple questions. Again, for anyone that's not confident in their own English, these are questions that you can ask your child about the about comprehension passages and also about any books that they're reading. Um, so ask where, when, and who. So those are simple deduction questions. Those are kind of the easy um, questions that they might get in the exam. So just which characters are in the, in the passage? How are they related to each other? And then more advanced questions are like why? So why do you think that character did that? Um, why do you think they've gone there? and what will happen next. So they're having to draw on their knowledge of the story so far, and then draw their own inferences, um, which are great for comprehension questions. Um, once you have discussed the passage at home, then ask your child to complete the questions independently if possible, so they can get used to doing that on their own. Um, for children that are reluctant to sit down, reluctant to do English, or reluctant to write, then you can do, you can go over the questions orally. Um, if you do that every now and again, it is not going to hurt. Um, the point is that you're building the English skills that your child needs, um, but you might want to just give them a break from writing. So either you write the questions or um, you discuss them and you maybe tip them off in the book after you've discussed them. For children that are having any difficulty with the questions, model looking for evidence in the passage. Most children don't realize that they are supposed to do that. Um, so if they ask you for clarification on something, um, then say, I'm not sure, let's have a look. Um, let me check whether my memory serves me correctly, just so they know that you too are looking to the passage and you're not just memorizing all of the information in one go. Um, and finally, overlap slightly with the previous point, but guide your child towards the evidence. So if your child has um, undertaken the questions independently and they have corrections to do, then just give them a little hint as to which part of the passage um, you could use to find that information. So I'm um, saying, oh, well, it was at the beginning that they spoke about X, Y, Z. So why don't you look in that first paragraph? Or they mentioned that at the end. So why don't you look in that section? Okay, um, just checking questions. Um, thank you, Manasi. Um, the Week Junior apparently is very good for magazines. 
Okay, um, so working on creative writing at home. So these are quick tips uh, designed for those that um, are not confident in writing themselves. Uh, so hopefully, even if you don't know anything about 11 plus vocabulary, um, you can check these things with your child and just get them on the right track. So learn vocabulary fluently and in context. I see a lot of children uh, that learn vocab, they can learn the definition, but they haven't really explored the word in context. They haven't experimented with example sentences or found out which words to use those words with. Um, we call those collocations when you use um, two words together commonly. Um, my uh, splitting headache would be a collocation. We often use those two words together. Um, so without learning all of that around vocabulary, children can often misuse a word or they use a word that's in a way that's kind of right, but we just wouldn't really say that. Um, so if you're working on vocab and your child needs to develop their creative writing, make sure that they have thoroughly learned and understood vocabulary. Um, one thing with that, if they've just learned definitions by rote, when they get into the exam, it does ring alarm bells for an examiner that maybe a child has been over-tutored. Um, so they've been taught things without really understanding what they're learning, um, which can count against them. Okay, um, exploring the five senses. So this is something that really elevates creative writing and something that the vast majority of students forget. So most children just write about sight, like I saw an azure house or something like that. Um, but if they can add in descriptions of other senses, then that's going to get them a lot more marks. So um, something like the walls of the house were damp um, or the clothes scratched at my skin. So we have some touch in there, um, but just including a variety of the five senses. So that's something that you can check your child's work for at home and they can check their own work against that criteria. Um, so have they included the senses? And if not, can they put some in there? Um, make sure that your child plans any stories before they write. Um, as a mock examiner, it is painfully obvious when children haven't planned their stories, um, the story just jumps and goes back sometimes and forwards. Um, so if your child is writing a story at home, um, time them, give them five minutes to write a plan and then check that they've actually written that plan and that they've used it to do their writing. Um, you don't need, really need to check the contents of the plan, um, but just make sure that there actually is one. So they have to go through that process of thinking through the story. Um, and finally, explore micro writing, as they call it. So not every piece of writing has to be a whole story. Uh, doing it that way can be very daunting for children, very off-putting. Um, so you can do exercises like writing descriptive paragraphs, um, writing just one verse of a poem, or writing two sentence stories. Um, there, so occasionally when my students have experiments with them, um, there are a list of two sentence horror stories online. Not all of them are suitable for children because some of them are really scary. Um, but I've picked out a couple of two sentence horror stories and then the children have tried to write their own two sentence scary story. Um, so just that kind of thing can get the creative juices flowing, uh, get your child thinking about language and description without overwhelming them with having to write a whole page or two pages. Hmm. And finally, we're on our last slide. So tips for reluctant readers. Um, let me know if you have a reluctant reader at home. Um, I have to say there were times as a child that I think I would have been considered a reluctant reader. Um, it turns out I love nonfiction books and autobiographies and stuff. And you don't get many of those as a child. Um, so I did read but in the end, I actually did classics for A-level, um, so I read some very long books. But um, yes, I didn't like being forced to read the classics, that's for sure. Um, okay, so um, the first tip for reluctant readers is to allow them to read books at their own level. Um, 
just because your child is nine or 10 doesn't mean they have to read particular books. Um, and it doesn't mean they need to read books for children that are a couple of years older. Remember, they need to understand at least 95% of the words in the story in order to understand the story. So if you go beyond that, then really you're just wasting time um, because they're not gonna take in what they're reading. Um, it's not gonna elevate their vocabulary um, enough because they just don't have an understanding of the basic story in that case. Um, so yes, um, let them read books at their level. Sorry, just looking at a quick question, which I will come back to. Um, Right, there is um, in the link of link, the list of resources, um, there's a link to a site that I have to confess another member of this group recommended a while ago. And I'm sorry, I can't remember who, um, but there's a website called I think, the Reader Teacher, and uh, they have long lists of recommended reading and in particular, um, key stage two books for reluctant readers. So you can have a look at that for broadening your child's base of reading. Um, secondly, encourage your child to listen to audiobooks and read to your child where possible. Um, one of my customers uh, shared a little tip with me a while ago where um, with her twins, she reads uh, the first page or two of the story with them um, in the book, when they're starting a new book, sorry, and then she lets them continue from there. Um, so the reading together just sparks their interest and helps them kind of get over that initial hump of starting a new book if they're feeling a little daunted. Um, encouraging your child to listen to audiobooks is a really good way of introducing books that are beyond the level that they could normally read at. And it's a good way of introducing challenging vocabulary. Um, so with an audiobook, your child has a lot more clues as to meaning of the story. So there are sound effects, there's the intonation of the voices, um, and new words are pronounced correctly in audiobooks as well. Um, so with an audiobook, you can go just a, a bit above your child's reading age um, and can expose them to a wider variety of books and can expose them to some of the classic books um, if that's the route that you want to go down. Um, and if that's just reading to them, um, when you're doing reading aloud exercises with them, then um, you can read a paragraph or a page and they can read a page and just alternate to keep them going. Um, and then next one, said, let them choose the genre. Remember, uh, with general knowledge, you can gain general knowledge from a wide variety of places. You don't just have to read classic books in order to pass the 11th class. I've had many, many students that haven't read the classics or read one or two, um, and they have still passed the 11 class with fun and colors. So um, don't take the joy out of reading from your child at an early age by forcing them to read particular books. If they want to read, but they just don't, don't want to read the kind of book that you had in mind for them, leave them to it. Um, and you can use other techniques to expose them to the language and the stories of, um, of more advanced books. Okay. Um, and then finally, build vocabulary in other ways. Um, so as I said, reading isn't even necessarily the best way of boosting vocabulary. Um, for anyone that missed it, at the beginning, um, reading improves vocab by about 12%. Activities and discussion improve vocab by over 40%. So don't put pressure on reading as the only way that your child is ever going to improve their vocabulary. Leave reading to be a fun thing because that's really going to help your child when they're at secondary school and at university. Um, let that be fun, an enjoyable activity. Let them read what they want and then you can um, be safe in the knowledge that you are building vocabulary in different ways. Okay, um, that was all that I had um, to present today. I, um, there are some questions though, so I will go over these now and all oh, just quickly actually before I wrap up. Um, I can't forget to tell you that, um, so my company Wordia, which provides vocabulary resources and courses, um, our new courses, 
kick off next week, which are ideal for the 11 plus. Um, they incorporate all of the research backed methods that I've learned about and the methods that I've tested. Um, so if you would like to join any of our upcoming courses, either live or on demand, um, use code 11 plus journey to get 15% off until the end of the weekend. And then tomorrow, uh, I will be doing a live vocabulary session um, from this country, recovering lots of suffixes, um, class that has proved, was proved really popular a few years ago. Um, so at five o'clock, if your children can join the group then, then um, they can do a vocab session with me as well. Um, right, I will answer some questions. Um, any, any other questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, resources, the link that I posted earlier, does not work. I was in a bit of a panic because Zoom was down. Um, I will post the, I will repost the list in the description for this and in the comments in just a moment. Um, tips on building planning skills. It is a tricky one um, and one that I recommend you sit with your child and do. Um, keep it short. So you might want to discuss your child's ideas and then do the plan for them at first just so they can see that you just need to write down a few sentences um, and that's all you need to be able to go from there. Um, so yes, if you can model that and just have a discussion with them, then that's probably the best way. Um, but children definitely find it hard to develop those planning skills. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any templates. Um, not sure a template would um, even be that effective because it's um, jotting down your ideas. Um, but yeah, try doing it with your child at first. Uh, someone said, my daughter only likes to read Tom Gates books. Is that okay? Yep, it's fine. Um, and I, some of my children have mentioned vocab from those books. So she'll still be learning something. Um, she'll be learning about story structure, that sort of thing. Um, but if you're concerned, then use that uh, website that I mentioned, if you can want to expose her to books that are similar to that, but a little bit different, and uh, use audiobooks just to introduce something a little bit different. You can put those on at night or if you're in the car or something like that. Um, you're told that putting on the subtitles while watching TV as movie counts as reading. <laughs> uh, yes, um, it's candy. So it's quite helpful for, well, used to be helpful for spelling, I've had the subtitles on, on my TV for a few things recently, and the spelling has been atrocious, um, and some of the words have been wrong. Um, so be careful. On, uh, on apps like Netflix, Disney, they tend to be more accurate than they are just on general TV. Um, but it does help to see the word as well as hearing it. Um, okay, anything else? Website. Um, I'm not sure what you need. The website. Um, the, Perhaps the reader teacher, I will update the list of resources. So check back, give me 10, 15 minutes and then check the list of resources and everything I mentioned will be in there. OK, um, any other questions come up? I will keep an eye on the chat so and then can reply in the comments. So feel free to post things in. There. I hope that was helpful. Um, if it was helpful, I would appreciate a like on this post um, just to communicate to others that it was helpful for you. Okay. Uh, see you later and thank you for joining me. Bye.